Thanks for the organizers of the conference for inviting me here. Um, as I said earlier, my first time here was in 2001 as a PhD student, so my hair was uh, darker. That's the main difference. Um, and thanks for the organizers of the panel for such a, um, a great um, amount of work that, that I that I read and that, that I have to comment on. So um, just a little bit on, on my background right now. Uh, I come from a research center that uh, standardizes um, household survey data for Latin America f with the World Bank and other institutions. And uh, 15 years ago, we used to do all these micro simulation models, the Bourguignon, uh, Ferreira, Lustig type of models. So this is really uh, literature I'm, I'm familiar with. And um, the Argentine government had for some time the capacity to do um, benefit incidence analysis. Um, a bit like the CQ approach, uh, a bit um, of, of NOTA. Uh, but that capacity, unfortunately, was destroyed uh, a, a few years ago in the previous government when we also had the, the intervention and falsification of statistics. So right now I am in the government and I do a lot of things, but my main pet project was to reinstate that capacity. And so uh, we're going to be borrowing uh, uh, and, and, and a lot. And I mean, I think we don't call it copying in, in, in academia. So, uh, uh, but definitely, I, I, I relate to a lot of the issues you raised because I've been doing stuff on, on family allowances. And we have the problem of the random seed and what we want to have, et cetera. So uh, all these I relate. But uh, really, I think th these whole uh, Euro mode and, 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 and children uh, models are, are much more organized than what we did. And, and we're really uh, looking at what you are doing and incorporating uh, your work. So thank you for that. Um, so in terms of praising the asterisk uh, mod, uh, model, I'm going to explain that in a minute. Um, I think having a unified and, and coherent framework for analyzing taxes and benefit systems and, and comparing them between countries and between time within countries is amazing. Um, I think it's a great for descriptive analysis and also for exploring policy options. And I think that the case you presented is, is the perfect example of why we want to have something like this. Um, and, and then I was uh, over lunch, I was, I was chatting with, with Dr. Levy of IDB. And I think just, just having, as, as, as it's described on your paper, having people from the social, I mean, it's another name, but from social development ministries and, and, and treasury ministries sitting together and looking at, and tax authorities and looking at taxes and benefits all together uh, is, I don't know how much this project is, but that's worth, oops, it's many times worth its, its, uh, its cost. It's, that's great, and, and it's very uncommon in developing countries. We did a tax reform uh, a year ago in Argentina, and it was very hard for, uh, we were a bunch of, of academic nerds trying to say, no, no, but if you change the income tax, you also have to change the tax allowance because the bracket overlapped, et cetera. It's, um, it's very hard for policymakers in developing countries at least, or, or middle income countries to incorporate that. And so uh, what I read in your, your testimony there is uh, something we, we, we should really have, um, you should really show, I think, as a, as a great achievement of a project beyond the, the very interesting results. So uh, I had to, to think about uh, wrapping this up. And, and, and um, although these were very different papers, in a sense, uh, and so um, Pia prompted me to, to try to, 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 to wrap it up, and I, I'm very thankful for that. Uh, so there's a Euro mod, I, I call them asterisk mod because there's Latin mod and South mod, etc. but it's a family of mod um, models. Um, what do we have in, in, in this, well, what we've seen in this session is a series of outputs. So the benchmark uh, is the six models from African countries. That's something we, we look in comparison. We also had the, the counterfactual analysis, the, the Ecuador versus Colombia match uh, in terms of social protection policies, et cetera, which I think is a very, um, very interesting and, and, and original analysis. And my favorite, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't be picking favorites, but I'm, I relate a lot to, to your efforts. Um, applying this to the implementation of actual policy changes uh, in Zambia. And I'm going to talk about the, the, the Zambian case because I think it's, it's, it gives us a lot of food for thought and in, in the way it's done. And it's, I think it's the way this kind of analysis should be done um, in terms of analyz analyzing the impact, but also the options for financing and also the second round effects of the options because the taxes are non-neutral. So usually, 
if we have something in, in developing countries, we have some kind of butcher's exercise. So we have a million kids and three dollars each, and it's three million dollars. And so these analyses, I think, was really useful, uh, and I'm very glad that I that I had to see it. And then we have another layer, which is the layer of the inputs, right? Uh, there's the old joke about uh, making sausages and looking at the process, etc. But, uh, but we have to look at the process and look at what goes into. Um, the machine. I think, in, in uh, fortunately for us, in in in, in middle income, uh, lower upper middle income countries in Latin America, we have mm, we rely a lot on income data, and we don't have as much consumption or expenditure data. And so, for these exercises, it's an advantage. For measuring poverty, it's much it's much worse. Uh, but so this is how I made sense of this. Is that okay? It's an, an, an plus I've been practicing a lot of uh, PowerPoint um, skills. It's, I'm, very, I'm very proud of it. Um, one thing that, 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 I should, that, that I also wanted to, to highlight, this is um, from, from the lectures in public economics by Rush Chetty. It's how in main economic journals uh, we've been uh, there's been a growth in the use of admin data, and I think uh, what the, the, the last paper, in fact, I had a South Africa version, but it's, it's still the same, um, is a very good example of how we can exploit and use more uh, these administrative data. So um, going um, paper by paper, oh, shameless plug, I am uh, now an editor of a Journal of Economic Inequality. I, know, I don't know if you've heard of it. Uh, your submissions are welcome, um, I had to say. So looking at these individual papers, um, the South Africa, I'm sorry, I called it South Africa because I had mostly the South Africa exercise, I think has a, a very comprehensive and careful analysis of um, several um, alternative data sources. And there are many insights there on underreporting, measurement error, missing data, imputation, um, and how to deal with them, like consistency, adjustments, grossing up also the tax collection, the number of taxpayers, which is also a, a kind of a difficult balancing act. Uh, but I think at the base is, is a, a combination uh, of serving a, and admin data. Um, and it's something that we need to work more on. And so that's why I think this work is, is welcome. Uh, we did this for Argentina. This is, um, we took the, the main household survey and uh, also data from like percentiles of uh, formal uh, income and pensions, etc. And so we corrected for underdevelopment. Just to show you uh, the left, uh, this is for uh, formal salaried workers. So uh, the whole distribution shifts to the right. Uh, the, the, this is uh, for beneficiaries of family allowances. We have to impute and also we randomize who receives this because we have an underreporting in a survey. And so we run it 50 times or 20 or 30. We do all the same things and this is the result, we, inequality increases a lot, the, the survey really underreports income for higher incomes, but this is just my favorite graph. Um, what we do is we try to see the re-ranking of households uh, when we do the whole correction. And so what we have here is which households uh, move up in the percentile, the ones that move down and the ones that stay the same. So that, that, that gives us a flavor of what kind of uh, changes uh, are going on. On the six African countries paper, um, I, I know, for, I mean, for a living, uh, for 10 years, I harmonized uh, household survey data, so, and that's already hard. So harmonizing the data and tax system models is quite an accomplishment. I, I'm humbled. Um, as I said, income versus consumption expenditure is not such an issue for us. But um, a general comment on all these papers, uh, is that I think we should clarify a bit more which part of the exercises are accounting, with no disrespect, my father was an accountant, I have no problem with accounting at all, uh, and, and what is micro-simulation in the sense of incorporating um, behavioral uh, changes? Because when we simulate um, large changes, for marginal changes, there's no problem, when, but when we change a lot income taxes, when we change transfers, etc. you might expect some kind of non-trivial um, behavioral response. And I, I think that's something that, that maybe should, should, um, should be included in the future, not in this one, but in the whole family of South Mod, uh, pay, um, models. Um, in terms of assumptions and robustness, for two of the countries, uh, all of the employee, all of the salaried employees are assumed to be formal. If I 
got this right, and that, that might introduce some uh, some bias there, maybe uh, on, on what you've shown. So uh, I don't want 56 tables by quintile, by six countries, that's too much, but maybe uh, having some robustness to those assumptions would be useful, and perhaps using more uh, figures, graphs, charts, etc. So uh, for the work we did in Argentina, we chose not to go the Euromod route. We didn't go the CQ Lustig route. We just did it uh, on our own. But uh, we, we have basically the same. We start with uh, a market income adjusted, uh, net uh, transfers, uh, direct taxes, indirect taxes, all of these rings a bell. And then we have the D size, Gini, etc. Uh, so we try to show the, the, the whole effect of the state action. Um, and here we have taxes and social insurance contributions, all the transfers, all the direct tax, indirect taxes, etc., all the, um, and all the goods. What we have, and I think that's something we have the luxury to have because we're working with a lot of detail into one country, is that we monetized health, uh, all education levels, and also we included a lot of um, fuel and energy subsidies, which I'm not sure in, in the, the African, the six African countries, as you say, you have some limitations in what, what you can monetize or not. But at least in Argentina, these are very, um, very important items in terms of uh, government expenditure. Um, and so these are just taxes by diesel and expenditure by diesel. Uh, on the Colombian Ecuador paper, it's, uh, it's a very uh, in interesting exercise, this counterfactual. Uh, it's very well published already in a very prestigious journal, so um, I don't have much to add in that sense. But um, I really like that the composition exercise, and uh, I think what, what you suggested, that maybe you can do more of these uh, the composition exercises with the other South mod, uh, models is, is really great. If you can build this into the capabilities of the models, how much do I have? No, two, okay, two, good. Um, now, Colombia is richer than Ecuador, so uh, there's an issue of absolute versus re, uh, relative redistribution and the level of benefits, but, but I think that's already addressed in the paper. Um, my only point here is that uh, taking the, the, the social um, insurance and, and tax and benefit system of Ecuador and throwing it across the, 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 the border uh, to Colombia would imply non-marginal uh, changes uh, in, in people's behavior, and so that, that might have an effect uh, there. Finally, um, the micro so our, uh, I'm, I'm a bit envious here that our next step is to build a micro simulation model for, for Argentina. And this, this is exactly um, the type of analysis that we try to, to provide uh, to senior ministers and, and, and the president when we have to make changes to social, um, to cash transfer programs. Um, so here we have the, the expansion of a social protection program that looks uh, into its direct distribution impact, but also, that's, we have a treasury person here, uh, we look at the cost and financing issues, and also to the second round distributional consequences of these taxes, okay, which are, uh, might be, again, non-trivial. And so that's why I think this, this idea of the joint work between social protection and tax authorities and tax and expenditure authorities, and, and the, the joint assessments uh, of both tracks is really a lot of value added here for, for policy making or for the analysis of this type um, of, of uh, initiatives. So um, again, behavioral reactions, uh, there's an issue of the amounts, if they're in dollars or not. That I, I had never, I, my ignorance, but I had never heard of the currency, so I, I didn't have a sense of how much that was. Um, there's only one point. Uh, as you know perfectly well, uh, the devil is usually in the implementation detail, okay? So um, I was shocked to see that uh, children zero to two were not covered, and of, I think this is the, the, the main, um, the, my main take home of, of this paper is how to cover them and the impact that would have. Now, uh, it's very easy for us with the whole survey to simulate how, uh, how conditions would change if we give this group some money. It's not that easy for the social protection or social insurance authorities uh, to reach them and, and ensure that uh, coverage, et cetera. So that's, that's where I think um, 
we, we need to be a bit more careful when we say what the impact would be, maybe some assumptions about imperfect uh, takeover, incomplete take, um, not takeover, uh, take up, thank you, take over. I want to take over Zambia now that they have this model. Um, and then the tax and financing uh, of proposals section was very short, but you talked more about it, so probably you, you're going, it's, it's in the making. Um, so keep on this excellent work, We're, we all benefit from it. Uh, there's one bullet point which is not here, which is, uh, but is what you mentioned, uh, confidence intervals. We need a bit more on that. We need, we need, we need to show, uh, I mean, we know how, how much we, we, might be, um, we might be wrong here. So using more admin data, um, having more consistency work between admin and survey data, um, robustness uh, of results to alternative assumptions, um, adding as much as we can in terms of in-kind service provision, uh, and uh, next step probably uh, agents' behavioral reactions for major non-marginal non policy changes. Thank you very much. <laughs>